of those people that are working with Java or C++. Okay? Those people working with Python or MATLAB. Something like that. Okay. There's a straight engineering trade-off between those two kinds of languages. Right? Neither is better than the other. It's simply a trade-off. And it's the difference between getting permission and getting forgiveness. Okay? On the Java and C++, Fortran, C Sharp side of the world, okay, we say, you have to tell me a lot about what your program is supposed to do before I will even run it. You have to, for example, say, uh, the variable threshold is a floating point number that is always going to be greater than zero. And it's a constant after it's been declared. And it's only visible to these three parts of the program. You have to tell me a lot of this stuff beforehand no? so that I can do two things. Number one, I can check if you ever try to use that, that value incorrectly. I could say, wait a second, you told me this was going to be a floating point number, now you're trying to assign a string or an integer or a complex number. Bad you. No hop knobs. Right? Number two, the more information you give me up front, the more I can optimize your program. I, as a compiler, can take a look at all the things you've told me and I can say, right, if this and this and this and this, I can make it go faster this way. Okay? Those languages are more oriented towards large teams and high performance by the machine. Now let's swing down to the other end with Python and MATLAB. These are more about forgiveness. As we'll see, you want to create a variable, just assign it a value. You don't have to tell Python or MATLAB or IDL anything about the variable before you create it, anything about the function before you create it, you just start writing it. So there's a lower threshold before you start to get results out, but it can do less checking for you. There are more mistakes that you can make. We're giving you freedom, but it includes the freedom to hang yourself. Okay? It also means that these languages tend to have lower computer performance. Python is about 20 times slower than heavily optimized C. And that ratio is never going to change. By doing more things for you and being more liberal in what it will accept and the guesses that it makes, languages like Python and MATLAB optimize your time rather than the computer's time. It's faster to write the code, but the code itself will run slower. So if you are noodling around writing something and you don't care whether it runs in one second or five seconds, the thing to optimize is your time. You want it to be quick to build. You want it to be quick to make changes. On the other hand, if you are building a global climate simulator and it takes four to six months to run, a 10% savings in the computer's runtime is worth investing a few years of programmer time. Right? Because you want to be able to do this on the supercomputer over and over again, and the difference between a six-month runtime and a three-month runtime is doubling the number of results you get. So if you're building a little desktop tool and all it's going to do is ask an elderly person, listen to these sounds, tell me which ones you hear, and I'll help design your cochlear implant, it probably doesn't matter if its response time is 10 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds when they press the key. The thing to optimize is your time. If you're about to process a terabyte of salvaged audio data from CBC radio programs from the 1930s till the 1990s, because you're trying to clean it up and digitize it and do speech to text and so forth so we can start indexing it, your expected runtime is 18 months. It's worth investing some time up front to cut that down to nine months. Okay. So this is a straight engineering trade-off. Neither is better than the other. They're intended for different purposes. So the next time you hear somebody ask you, or you know, in the pub after a couple of pints, X is the best language to program in. Right? It, it's, you know, screwdrivers are better than hammers. Well, no. I, I have, in fact, used the butt end of a screwdriver more times than I'd like to think about to put in a nail. But it's not the right way to do it. So.